Okay, uh, I'm going to try to continue with uh, Dr. the subject, Dr. Charles Morton. But just to give you an idea of how much documentation that I that I have in the form of paper, uh, in which I've only tried to print out relevant pages, and then digital digital wise also, um, that a lot of this stuff may be in here. I don't know. That's the problem that I have right now, sorting out what I have and. The thing that I just picked up is this, and this uh, is supposed to be just an entire archive of anything related to Jack's genealogy, including full book downloads and anything else I can get my hands on. Uh, a little more complete than what I have uh, around me here, but I've got this box, this box, this box, and that box in the back. I'm not even getting that clearly. These three carryable boxes and this paper box right here. I may have overstated how much I have it, so it's an awful lot. Some of that stuff's experimental, some of it's directly related. And the things that I've already entered into my family tree generally tend to be in these two boxes here. But I've also covered other branches of Jack's family as well um, to try to get as complete picture as possible. And let me tell you, it is very difficult to do uh, genealogies for McDonald families in Canada. <laughs> but I digress. Okay, um, right now what I have here is a file folder of just when I'd find something that was Jack Morton related to what I considered his works, um, I would hole punch it and put it in a file. Now what seems odd to me is that here at the top we have 1770 and I hopefully I didn't only limit this to um, have a hopefully I don't have a ton of notes of the kings written here. Um, I probably have another one of these. This is probably part one of two. And um <laughs> my god. And then I'm just really not even ready to do this. Um but I'm going to anyway. It's going to ram it through. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty much ready. I, a lot of this stuff I have in memory, but um, and there's just a ton of stuff, and some stuff that could be related, um, some things that are ancillary related. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to just pick things up and look at them and tell you what I think about them, pretty much. But I'm going to try to do it. Start it with a cohesive manner here. And I know I had a few loose pieces of paper that I just recently found that would be in here. That I just set aside. Probably these. I don't even know if I have them in there. I probably don't want to do paperwork and hole punching in front of everybody. So, um, And then I have various subjects to cover. A lot of various subjects to cover. But I'm going to try to, try to right now focus on what is contribution to society may have been. Now, I'm going to say um, right now that by no means am I a um, an expert at, say, the history of the British Museum or for whatever subject and correspondence that he's getting into, I'm not, don't assume that I know every single thing about all the individuals that are talking to him and have a very in-depth knowledge. I am just presenting what I know and have discovered. Now, the way I interpret that, and I guess I'm going to try to um, make it clear when I'm drawing an interpretation and what is direct evidence, um, you know, that interpretation's probably better be done by someone that's a little more closely familiar with it. Okay, so in this, and theoretically, if this thing is in date order, then this so far is everything up to 1770. So, not too shabby. And I guess I'll start with the bottom one. I haven't looked at this in a long time. Okay, so here is something about uh, illustrations of literary history of the 18th century. With some authentic memoirs. Got this off Google. Um, this, is, this was compiled by John Nichols. And if he has any relation, I don't think he has any relation to the Gow Nichols that... Um, William Richard Drake uh, talked about so highly, but... Nonetheless, in fact, I was looking at I was looking at this piece of paper the other day, and this is one of the earlier ones, actually. 
<coughs> which is good. Okay, so back in uh, hmm, July 22nd, 1765, um, a, someone wrote a Mr. DaCosta, and apparently Mr. DaCosta was um, a member of the Royal Society, if I remember what I've read right, there's an assumption, but I think I remember what I've read right. And um, now this this I this I am gonna say there is some interpretation involved, but I'm I'm gonna really um, put some thought behind it, and I'm also gonna present another piece of evidence if I could just dig it out from this area. Um, now again, just just a review. Yeah, here it is. Good. Just to review uh, <laughs> Dr. Charles Martin's life in general, we don't know much about him until he became a doctor and practiced at Kendall, Westmoreland. Um, while he was there, um, there's a few newspapers that I don't have at hand right now in which he was one of several people that were going to attend certain dinners or, or, or functions. There seemed to be formal. I don't remember off the top of my head what they were. They didn't seem to be very eventful. And then he makes his entrance into into um, to London about three years before he died. And here, and this, if I have this right, darn it. Yeah. Well, actually, this comes from the Royal Society's website, so that's that's good. I'm just going to show it. And I think they put some more arch archives up there than what I was at least able to find before. So. Um, that's great. And I will mention one thing about this letter. Okay, so this is the re letter really, as far as I could tell, the letter of recommendation at the top, <laughs> seems a little misleading, but at the top is the letter, and I'll explain why, it seems to be at the top is the letter of recommendation for him to be uh, nominated as a member of the Royal Society. And then <coughs> this list of names below him I guess on various dates made their choice that they were gonna go ahead and let him join and finally down at the bottom they said that he was uh, balloted and elected and he was able to join the Royal Society January 16, 1752 and I don't have that in my article at all. Okay, so just, you know, okay, and up here it says Charles Morton MD, member of the Royal College of Physicians, that, that's when he was employed at the um, Foundling Hospital at that point. Um, it says he is of Leicester Fields. L-E-I-C-E-S-T-E-R Fields. Now, there also is a book, if, God, if I can remember what it is, Justice of the Peace and the Parish Officer, and I forgot the guy's name, but the guy acknowledges Dr. Charles Morton of Leicester Fields uh, for his help and what a justice of a peace was back then. They seem to have almost like an American clerk's duties to record things, but a little bit of judicial duties too, almost like maybe a Mexican notary. Uh, but again, I'm not, uh, these are all assumptions. I'm not an expert on it. But when I read the contents of the book, it, it seemed to cover pretty much on almost like branch or portion of civil procedure um, is what, is what we call um, legal procedure in California. There's a civil code, rules that have to be followed to, to file a lawsuit, to answer lawsuits, motions, this, that. There's a form for everything as far as I know. It's supposed to have been uh, to make it more user-friendly and understanding for members of the general public. Completely different thing. I've digressed a little bit, but nonetheless, um, now i wish I remember the name of that author and you may be watching and you may be jumping up and down in your seat saying it was the, the I don't know sorry now um, that acknowledgement may be somewhere in this but this 1752 actually takes place before this letter to Mr. DaCosta now keep in mind that certainly by um, July 22nd 1765 Dr. Morton was a secretary of the Royal Society there is just to point that out, here are little pieces of correspondence from the Royal Societies, or summarizations 
from the Royal Society's webpage where they got, you know, there's people writing Dr. Charles Morton, and a lot of this correspondence really has to do with him trying to get uh, scientific data about the transits of Venus. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, so the, and just the only point of me whipping that, that out was to say, okay, he, he was already a member of the Royal Society in 1752, pretty much corresponding with people doing scientific work around the world in 1761. And now here we have, in 1765, a letter that's been attributed to the Earl of Morton. Okay, and I'll get into this a little bit, I think, and I... I'm just going by memory of what I think I've read. I was following a lead at one point. I maybe I will get to Mr. DeCosta's letter. I was following a lead at one point in which um, it was discussing the Earls of Berkeley, and something happened. <laughs> All too vague for a presentation, I know, and they lost their title as the Earl or Baron or I think it was the Earl of Berkeley and this was early 1700s or it might have been the la someone with the last name Morton was the Earl of Berkeley I you know I wish I wish I knew everything I wish I was I wish I was Mr. Data but I'm not so nonetheless uh, and that's pretty ancillary anyway I'll just get to this I'll read the contents and then I'll tell you what I think and uh, except for people that are more knowledgeable to tell me I'm, I can stuff it or uh, say, hey, you might be on to something. Okay, so this is supposedly a letter, uh, two letters to and from the Earl of Morton. And uh, this is written to Mr. DeCasa. Now this was um, at Delmahoy near Edinburgh, July 22nd, 1765. Now, <clears throat> I will say one thing that's interesting that I'm not that I really can't back up all that well. <laughs> Another divergent comment is that there are some manuscripts in the Hunterian Museum in the University of Glasgow, just basically papers that were written. Right here. Google Books is just great. <laughs> uh, written here, <coughs> and a portion of this or some notes by Christopher White. And right here, Christopher White, uh, he has some accounts of admissions of extra lysians, and he also has, on uh, September 6, 1748, Charles Morton and V. Kendall, um, notes, I guess, about him applying for a license. Now, the question in my mind that I don't have answered is, well, since his manuscript landed in Glasgow, might he have been in Scotland? Question mark? Okay, just a question. Okay, we'll find out. I don't know enough about this Charles White guy, but now i got to look into Charles White. Is it Charles White? Yeah, no, sorry, Christopher White. I have to look into Christopher White and see if he holds any significance other than just in this manuscript catalog. But if he does, was he from Scotland? And that might say that, yeah, for some, whatever reason, Dr. Morton was in Scotland a little bit, or he at least traveled there. And so, now let's get back to all this. Okay, so we've got uh, someone writing Mr. DaCosta, uh, 